back to the smooth and sexy sounds of the warehouse, I'm going to teach you the reels on the guitar. Okay, the reels start out with um, a cello drone followed by a drum sort of intro, and then the guitar gets in there on the second part of the tune. And the second part of the tune starts with an E minor. You can play the E minor in two ways. You can play it like this, or even full if you really want. But I kind of like doing this. And the reason is the next chord, the D, we're going to use this shape. It's not really a D, it's D-ish, if you will. It's got a D on bottom at least. And that uh, goes, uh, let's see, mute, the bottom string. And then on the A string it's 5, and then 4 on the D string. And that same chord shape, if you slide it down two frets, is your C. And then you change it slightly, so now it's 7, 5. You got your E minor. I like using this a lot, especially if you meet that bottom, because you have kind of like a little moving bass line over a nice uh, droning top. It's not in there, but um, something like it. Those are the chords that I wrote for the piece. Um, if you wanted to do it like this, I suppose you could. That would work too, but I, that's too cool to give up, so just learn those. They're two, two finger chords. I love two finger chords because they're so easy to play. Um, a little suspension going into the first part of the tune. It's a D7, but you just take your ring finger off and you plop it back on. Plop. Which leads to a G chord. Now this is a special G. It doesn't have a third in it, so it sounds really open and hollow, and I like that in Celtic music. Most, most Irish music doesn't like you to have thirds, especially in the, the one chord. So we're going to learn this chord. It's a G chord. It's like a pop G, I call it a pop G. It's like that G, only we're going to take off the third and the bottom and mute it with the middle finger, which is playing that low G. It goes like that. This is really nice, additionally, because you can move chord shapes around inside of it, and you'll see what I mean in a minute, and um, it has sort of like a nice continuous sound. Uh, we use a sort of a D shape, a D7 shape. Again. Still muting that A string. We do a little C shape in there, which is like the C, only G's surrounding it. It's really nice. I'll show you what I mean by uh, the continuous sound. Oh, by the way, sometimes I use my thumb. You can do it too, just remember you still have to mute that A string if you go that way. It's not really good technique, I wouldn't recommend it, but sometimes I do it. It's a hangover from when I learned guitar. I taught myself guitar, and this is, no kidding, the first chord I learned. It's a G chord. Isn't that the worst technique you've ever seen? Well, I didn't have a teacher, so... So don't use your thumb if you don't need to. But when you're in a pinch, you can use it. Um, and that's pretty much it for the whole tune. You go back and forth between those two sections. You get to the next tune, which is an A. And uh, you're going to use chords that I hope you've seen before. At least this one you've seen before. Yeah, from Finding Freedom. Uh, but instead of doing that little back and forth, we're going to go... With your middle finger. It's got a nice little flavor to it. Uh, a minor tunes go well over that. It sounds like this. Eventually get to the D part of the tune. You kind of drone over that for a while, but when you get to the D part of the tune, you do go to C major and G and F. You can go ahead and use those big. It's a nice big sound, so go ahead and use the regular C G F chords that you're familiar with. Um, but when you get back to the A minor, um, I do some big A minor stuff, and you can do it like this. These chords. Or you can do it like this. It doesn't matter. The whole section is kind of chaotic. You got um, drum and bass stuff going on that's just very non traditional. So it doesn't really matter how you chord those. Um, just do whatever you're comfortable with. 
when you do go to the D, um, D7, D9 chord, I do want you to play this one. Just because it's so cool. You probably already know that from Mason's Apron. Like that. This is in the, uh, I think it's the second section. It's where the bass is doing the sweet emotion line. and um, I'm just going to vamp on that for a little bit. And then it's back to the... because the fiddle line is really informing what chords you're playing there. Um, kind of go from there. And then the last tune, when you get to Frank's reel, um, the chords you need to know look like this. You have an A, a major chord. Sometimes you're going to play a full D and a full E. When you play that full D, make sure to slap your thumb around. I guess you could re-finger it so you don't have to use your thumb. Just make sure you're not playing D. That open E, I just can't stand that sound on a D chord. Um, sometimes, though, we use an A chord without a third, and the way we do that... My wife, she's having fun with me now. <laughs> Shame on you. Uh, there's your A chord without a third. Two finger chords, I love two finger chords. D chord without a third, two finger chords, just make sure to mute the bottom, don't want that E. Um, and you can just play a full fledged E major for that. Um, let me just play a little bit of this tune and you can kind of hear where, how it's going. You kind of fade in. Instead of going, you're going to go. I like that sound. You know that B minor from Mason's as well. I like that shape. So I use that quite a bit. Second part of the tune. sharp on bottom, and slide it down to the F sharp. You're just kind of following the fiddle line. It's really important in Irish music for the guitar player to actually know the fiddle parts, or know the melody parts, because that really tells you what you're going to be playing on guitar. Um, so listen to the fiddle part, you know the chords now, you'll, you'll follow it pretty well. I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there are any surprise chords in there. Oh, you know, the last time I play that A part, I do do this kind of little breakdown section, right? And it's just your A major. Seven, six, five. Open. Slot, slid down a little bit. And then, to get out of it, this chord, I think you play this in Tobin's if you guys still play that set. Um, a nice sounding D chord, slide that one up two frets and you got a nice sounding E chord with the A on bottom. But it. And then you're back into the second part of the tune. And I think the ending, really important that yeah, it's nice and crisp. Good luck, rock it out, have a blast, and um, make sure that the guitar part's really driving. You kind of want to be like aggressive about it, and um, you'll do great.